star of the HBO original drama, America's Dream. Please join me along with Wesley Snipes, Jasmine Guy, and Tate Donovan as we bring this trilogy of moving stories to life. Rural Alabama, 1938. A time and place where blatant prejudice was just a part of everyday life. You live with a white man! He ain't got enough! Why you gotta give him everything? Georgia, 1948. A boy's expression of pride ignites controversy and a moral dilemma. What do you think of Aaron's painting? Look, get that thing out of here. I can't believe you mean what you just said. Chicago, 1958. A talented musician is haunted by painful childhood memories. You and your parents hurt me bad. Well, that was a long time ago. Not long enough. <gasps> Prepare yourself for a very unique television experience. The HBO original drama, America's Dream. Coming in February on HBO. Next on HBO. They're young, gifted, and they make universities millions. But should they be paid? Nick Nolte and Shaquille O'Neal. Blue Chips. Next on HBO. HBO invites you on a special journey through barriers and limitations to triumph and glory. The first time I've ever heard an announcer call a black man an American was in the smelling and Jola's fight. The journey of the African-American athlete based on the black experience rooted in the American dream. Premieres Monday, February 12th on HBO. The Celluloid Closet, an HBO special event, one time only. All oh, movies are important and they're dangerous. Like writing for Pravda. You did learn how to write between the lines, a photograph between the lines. And no one questioned what that meant or what the alternatives could have been underneath the dialogue. That kind of sexuality of ours, which overlaps. Some like it hard, some like it soft. Love is spelled, you know, with the same four letters. The Celluloid Closet, narrated by Lily Tomlin. Coming out Tuesday, January 30th, where Hollywood hides its secrets. Hello, I'm Will Shakespeare, and I'm here to tell you about my new animated tales. That's right, we've got new ones. How do we do it? Volume! <laughs> I'm Crazy Will. Come on down. We've got Richard III. An Elizabethan good fellow. We've got Taming the Shrew. She's so tough. She makes Tanya Harding look like Gidget! We've got Winter's Tale! What a sad story. Oh, you don't want to know. We've got everything you need and Julius Caesar! My little friend, the hood ornament here. Shakespeare, the animated tales, hosted by Robin Williams. A new tale premieres Sunday night at 7.30 on HBO. Come on down, see our crazy new animated tales! One day soon, some hiker or fisherman is going to come walking out of those woods with a story about a wild woman. Double Oscar winner Jodie Foster takes on two ambitious roles as co-producer and star of Nell. It's like there's no one else in the world. She doesn't need anybody. Foster plays an isolated backcountry woman who's discovered by civilization after the death of her mother and who seems to speak her own unique language. Miss, Miss Tay. Miss. She's living in a very brave way, in a very unconscious way, in a very, very dangerous, dangerous world. Um, and she does all the things that we're told not to do. Well, we've come to pick Nell up. Yeah, I heard. Real life husband and wife Liam Neeson and Natasha Richardson co-star as the local doctor and the scientific researcher whose humanity is awakened by Nell's emotional honesty. You ever get lonely? No. We get seduced into that. Uh, it's seduced by her in her life. I don't mean that in a sexual way, because there is nothing like that between them. And she teaches them that if that you learn, you will learn strength from being vulnerable, actually. How speak, Jay. I think they will damage people, the three of them. You know, this movie says, doesn't say, look, be like now. And, and Paula has to confront the damage in her, and, and all of them do, and it brings them together, yeah. Oh, I'm going to get all tearful now. <laughs>
Guiding the project is British-born director Michael Apted, whose acclaimed studies of American individuality include Coal Miner's Daughter and Gorillas in the Mist. And cut. And a cut. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. The one-line verse of the film is sort of preposterous, and I think, you know, we needed someone, she needed someone who could make it kind of realistic and authentic. And to use, you know, what I bring to a movie, which is my documentary soul, in a sense, to try and make it believable every step of the way with not just the story, but the characters and whatever. Much of Mel's character is revealed through the language she alone seems to speak. Guy. The screenwriter developed the language, Bill Nicholson, and uh, we came along and talked about what, what the different influences would be and, and, and how, how the audience at, at certain points would get clues to speaking the language and understanding the language so that by the end of the film they understand everything that she says. Die in the wind. Die in the wind. Die in the wind. Tree in the wind. You're a tree in the wind. I made a conscious effort not to learn the lines so that I would arrive fresh to the experience and they would feel as if um, they were part of the gestures and part of the body language more than anything else. The other important element of Nell was the pristine filming site in rural North Carolina, which both isolated and inspired the filmmakers. You know, you'd be a, a madman if you didn't kind of, well, if you weren't moved by the beauty of the environment. I know it was, to us, it was a place we had to work. It was hard work. It was difficult work. It was wet work and all that. But nonetheless, you would look around and you'd think, my God, this isn't a bad place to have the office, you know. For me, it was very definitely a characterization. It was great to do a film like Nell where I just wanted to be sort of exposed, but, but I just wanted to be, to be just raw and, and be open and vulnerable as much as I could be with this subject matter and with these, with these actors, you know, Jody and Natasha. For Natasha Richardson, the biggest emotional journey came just before the cameras rolled. It was in the process of, of auditioning for this part that I, I had to go through what Paula goes through. I started off with those barriers of like, well, why aren't they giving me this part? And also thinking, well, I'm not going to go out there and really fight to get this part because I'm going to get really hurt if I don't get it. And so I had to put myself on the line. And, um, and that taught me a lesson and a good one. It's time to show her the big bad world and see how she handles it. As for how Jodie Foster managed to shed her real life sophistication to play the instinctual Nell, and at the same time co-produced the film, the actress says it was surprisingly simple. I thought it was going to be hard to find this. I thought I was going to have to be totally focused and, you know, and cut everybody out and not talk to anyone and all that kind of stuff. And the truth was is that um, it, it is a gift to be given a character like this to play because you can drink a cappuccino and talk to your friends and then suddenly somebody says action and you just have to be honest. You cannot call on anything else. Well, actually, it was easier than I thought. You scared? Next on HBO, they're young, gifted, and they make universities millions. But should they be paid? Nick Nolte and Shaquille O'Neal. Blue Chips. Next on HBO. The bad news. It's the final season of Dream On. Happy thoughts. The good news. All those questions you ever had will finally be answered. Everything's going to be okay. It's all happening in 10 great shows. <laughs> But you got to watch every one to get the whole picture. Because at HBO, we do endings big. Ah! Dream On. The final season premieres Wednesday, January 24th on HBO. One woman. Hello, I'm Tracy Oldman. Playing 20 characters. Taking on one topic a week. On the first Tracy takes on. Romance. Romance like Donna. Everybody hungry for Donna. Everybody hungry for romance. There's really only been one great romance in my life. Bye bye, darling. Bye bye, darling. That was with my horse. I'm a chick magnet. That's why they call me chick. Hi. Tracy takes on romance. The season premieres Wednesday, January 24th. Only on HBO. 
Dennis is back. You want it? You want a piece of me? And ready to tackle Bosnia, the budget, and the Battle of the Bulge. Some audiences are like a box of chocolate. Uh... So stand by. <laughs> there's the real world, and then there's the joke world, okay? And stand back. The joke world can get tough. Wear a cup. I'll take bloody gloves for 200, Alex. <laughs> for this season's kickoff of Dennis Miller Live. Premieres Friday, January 26th on HBO. Next on HBO. They're young, gifted, and they make universities millions. But should they be paid? Nick Nolte and Shaquille O'Neal. Blue Chips. Next on HBO. Who the hell are you? He's James T. Cook. Don't you read history? For those who have boldly gone before, and the next generation of voyagers, a new mission unfolds. I have an appointment with Eternity. The star is going to collapse in a matter of minutes. I have to stop it, but I need help. Patrick Stewart, Malcolm McDowell, and William Shatner. I was out saving the galaxy when your grandfather was in diapers. Star Trek Generations. Premier Saturday, February 3rd, exclusively on HBO. Tonight, it's on HBO. At 8, a sweeping family saga that takes place over one weekend. The critically acclaimed HBO original series, Laurel Avenue Part 1. At 9.30, the saga continues with Laurel Avenue Part 2. Then at 11, let the television turn you on. Shock Video 3, turn on TV, America Undercover. Laurel Avenue Parts 1 and 2, and America Undercover. HBO is on tonight.